Okay, hey, this is Chris Silveda, Simple Listing Solutions, and welcome to this little mini class where I'm going to show you how to build your individual property squeeze pages, whether you want to advertise a just listed or a just sold. It's a really simple process, but before we get started, you're going to need a notepad. Okay, so there's a couple things you need to um, have at your side right now, and it's a piece of paper, thing number one, and a pen, thing number two. Just a few notes to take, not a lot, but there's some things you need um, in order to build a squeeze page, and you don't need to go out and buy them. They're already provided for you. <clears throat> um, so one of the things you're going to require is some sort of a screen capture software. You can use whatever you want. We provide you with one, and I'm going to show you where to find it. So you're going to need screen capture software. Uh, that's thing number one. Thing number two, you're going to need some sort of a program to work in, whether it's PowerPoint or uh, any kind of a, a layout, like a, you could do this in PageMaker, I suppose, or uh, any, any, any sort of software program that allows you to create postcards, whatever. Okay. I like to use PowerPoint just because it's pretty simple to use. All right. If you don't have PowerPoint, uh, you've got something else on your computer, I'm sure. Okay, so um, I'm going to walk you through the process of building a single property squeeze page. Okay, so the first thing you need to do <clears throat> is log into your back office, and we'll do that now. Just going to log in. Uh, we're going to go like this: SD Home Team, and we're going to say log in. <clears throat> and that's an invalid password. So let's try this one. There we go. Okay, so I'm in my back office, and you've got a back office just like this. And you do have screen capture software in your back office that you can download. All right, and it's going to be right underneath uh, this section called Training and Resources. Training and Resources. There's something called Download Screenshot Program right there. So you just click on that, and you can download the screenshot program, screen capture program. It's called Green. Uh, I think it's called Green Shot, but you can download it for free right from your back office. And when you do download it, you'll end up with a little icon down here on your computer that, that represents the, the, the software stuff. So there it is, and I can access it pretty easily. Okay, so I'm going to need that. So before you get started, make sure you've downloaded that because you're going to be using that tool. All right, so let's erase all of our drawings here. Now, getting started, I've got my back office open. But I want to open to something else here, so I'm going to close this for a minute, and I'm going to click, I'm going to right click, and I'm going to say open up a new, I'm going to click on new, and I'm going to say PowerPoint presentation, because that's what I like to use. Again, you might like to use Publisher or PageMaker or something else, but um, I like to use PowerPoint because it's pretty simple. So I've opened up a new PowerPoint presentation, and I could name it, I suppose, if I want to after the property, one, two, two, three, let's just call it Camino Del Mar. Okay, that's my property. All right, I'm also going to need a photo or several photos of the property. Okay, so let's, I got this open. I'm going to double click and open up my PowerPoint presentation. Okay, and we're going to wait for this to open. And then I'm going to come over here and click on home page and I'm going to say insert a new slide. All right, so now I've got a blank piece of paper here. And in fact, I'm just going to come over here to the design part. In fact, or maybe it's over here on home, and I'm going to say uh, the layout. I just want a blank. All right there we go. So I got a blank. Essentially, I'm looking at a blank piece of paper here. Uh, I consider it sort of like a chopping board. I can just do whatever I want. I, this is where I come and cut bait, so to speak. So I've got a blank piece of paper here, and I've got PowerPoint open. And we're going to do some stuff, but let's go back to the Internet now, Okay, where we're logged into our back office. And I'm going to come over here and hit Control T and open up a new screen. And I need some photos, right, of the property. And so you can get in your car and you can drive out to the property and take your own photos. Or you can just cut to the chase and you can just put in an address, okay? Let's say the property is located at 1141 Balloura Drive in, uh, let's say, Encinitas, California. Right? I'm going to hit Enter. There it is, right? and I can just click on that street view image right there. It says street view, and I'm going to open that up. So I can just let Google do the work for me. I don't need to drive out to the house. I got a street view of the house right here, right? 
And so I've also got my screenshot software, right, right down here. So what I'm going to do is take a nice photo of this photo. I'm going to right click on green shot and I'm going to say capture region. Okay. And then I'm just going to oh, put my cursor right here. I'm going to say, okay, I'm going to just click and drag and I'm going to say, all right, save as. All right. I'm going to say save as, and then I'm going to save this as, whoops. Well, maybe I lost my photo. I don't think I did, but I'm just going to take another one just to be safe. I'm going to say Capture Region, and I'm going to snap a little picture here. All right, Save As, and I'll just give it my property address, right? 1141 Bluer Drive. Yeah, I've got my screen is kind of hidden from me here, so I'm having a little bit of a challenge naming this thing, but 1141. All right, so I saved it, okay? And that's good. So now i got my photo. Right, that was easy. I just I just went on to Google Earth. I just typed in the address on Google. There's the house, and I snapped a photo of it with my screen capture stuff. Right now, I'm done over here on Google Earth. I can just shut that down. Right, and now I'm back in my back office. All right, now before I do anything over here in my back office, I'm going to open up that PowerPoint presentation, and I'm going to come over here and say Insert. Right, I'm going to click on Insert Pictures, and I'm going to go find that picture that I just saved. Right, if it's in here, 1141. Insert. Right. So here's my picture, and even from here I can play with it a little bit, right? All right. So I've got a photo, and it's hanging out right here. And I may want to add some text to this. I may want to say insert text box, and I could just come over here and write a little text box, and I could say, uh, you know, the John Smith team. Right. And I could say, I could even put on a phone number, right? Call for more info. If I want to, call for more info. I'm going to hit return here, and I'm going to put in a phone number, 877-721-8220. And I'm going to select all this text here, and I'm just going to go back to my home, click on this little home button here, and I'm going to say just center that text. Right? And then let's make that text a little bit bigger, too. Right? Let's say, let's make it, uh, I don't know. 24 point. That, that fits pretty good. And what I can do now is I can just click and drag this little text box right there. All right. Now that text is a little bit hard to see, so I could just select all of the text in there and I can make it bold. Maybe that'll make it a little bit easier to see. Bold. And if I want to, I could uh, change the color, right? Do whatever I need to do to make my text pop out. Uh, I could say, hey, that's not popping out enough. I could come over here to, to uh, shape fill. And I can say, well, let's fill that with white. All right? Wow, now it pops out, doesn't it? And I can take this box and I can move it right up here. All right? Call the John Smith team. So now what did I do? I have a photo and with a photo on top of it, right? A photo of a little text box here on top of my photo. So what I want to do now is use my green shot again. I'm going to right click and say capture region. And I'm going to take a picture of this picture. I'm just going to drag. All right? And I'm going to save this as a little JPEG image. So I'm going to say my property photo, right? My property pick. There we go. Save. So what I just did was I created uh, from two things. I created one thing. I created a JPEG image, a photo with some text on top of it. Okay, that's all. And I saved that to my pictures. So I'm really done over here in PowerPoint. I can put my logo, whatever I want. The sky's the limit, but I'm done for now. Okay. So let's close that, and we're going to say save, and we're done. Okay, so I'm in my back office. The first thing I want to do is take that picture that I just made and upload it. So I'm going to click on Upload Images. And then I'm going to scroll right down here and it says Add Another Image. Yep, so I'm going to say Choose File. Wait for this to open. Okay, so Choose File. Okay, and we called it, what do we call it, my, oh, it's actually in my pictures, isn't it? So I'm going to go over here to my photos, pictures, and we called it my property pick, I think. Yeah, there it is. So I'm going to select it, open it, and upload it into my back office. Okay, so there's my photo. You can see it in there. And when I uploaded it, it created this link, and I'm going to need this link in a moment. So in fact, what I'm going to do is I'm going to right-click on this link and say copy the link address. Okay, so now I'm done in the photo section. I'm going to go back to my main menu. And now I'm going to scroll down here to where it says customize website content. 
and I click on that. And I'm going to scroll down through all of these pages, and you'll, you'll note that some of these pages have an SQ next to them, which means squeeze. That means it's a squeeze page. It's not a, an, as opposed to these things up here that don't have an SQ next to them, those are pages that go on your primary website. But these squeeze pages are individual standalone web pages. Okay, so I'm going to come down here to my squeeze pages, and I'm going to look for my single property website. Now I've built a bunch of these, so you know I'm just going to go find it. You've got something called single property uh, squeeze page in your back office, right? And we can just come over here and click view to see what it looks like, All right? And it'll open up. All right, so I've got this template already set up. Right. So watch what I'm going to do. I'm going to come over here and I'm going to say, yeah, that one works for me. This single property squeeze page works for me. I'm going to copy it. I'm going to click copy. I'm going to make a copy of it. And the new one is going to be called 1141 Balloer, right? Because that's my property, 1141 Balloer. Now, something you need to be aware of, where it says new page ID, you cannot put spaces. Right? You can't write 1141 space Balloer space drive. It won't work. Right. So in new page ID, no spaces, I'm just going to write 1141 Bluer. Menu button text, well, that's what people are going to see. Down here you could write 1141 space Bluer drive. Right. You could even say just sold if you're doing a just sold or a Bluer drive for sale, whatever you'd like. Right. Bluer drive for sale. Now I'm just going to click submit. All right, that was cool. And now if we scroll down through all of our pages, you're going to see that I've got a new page down here called 1141 Bluer. You just made your new squeeze page for a new property. However, if you click view to go look at it, you're going to see it's, that's not the property. Yeah, you haven't customized it yet. Okay. So let's just close this. And 1141 Bluer Drive. Now I'm going to click edit. Right? And I'm going to open up this squeeze page. And there it is. Right? There's that squeeze page. And here's the photo that I want to get rid of. So I'm going to click on the photo that's there, and I'm going to say delete. Okay. And remember, I copied that link. When I uploaded a photo, it, it, it generated a, a link for me, and I right-clicked and I copied the link. I'm still holding it, right? So now my cursor is right where I want it to be. So I'm going to click on this little picture right here. It looks like a picture of a tree. I'm going to click on that. And I'm going to paste in the image URL. Paste. And then I'm just going to click insert. And then I'm going to say, okay. Right. And now there's my photo. I just replaced the photo. Okay. Now I can make a new headline. Right. So I'm going to put my cursor right here. I'm just going to backspace through this whole headline right here. You could select the whole thing and delete it if you choose to, but this is the way I like to do it. And so I'm going to say, check out, uh, let's come up with the headline, your neighbors at 1141 Balloer Drive just sold, right, just sold for, let's say, where did my text go? Yeah, just sold for mm, $30,000 over asking price in only six days, period, right? And then I'm going to say, check out the details below. Okay, now I'm going to come down here, and I've got to change the address, right? Because I've got to customize this page here to fit the new property. 1141 Bluer Drive. Just sold for, let's say, 938000 Sounds like a lot of money for a little house like that, huh? Okay, so 1141 Bluer Drive just sold for 938000 Now I've got to put in some property information right here, right? This lovely, we can just pretend that that matches. This lovely home was blah, 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 built in, you know, whatever you want to say about the house. Uh, this lovely five-bedroom, three-and-a-half-bath crossing cell home was listed for, uh, we're going to say 908000 right? $908,000 and sold in six 
days for $938,000. And then talk about the property, because remember, people are coming over here to compare it to their own. So you can say upgraded throughout, right? Lovely corner lot with ocean views, right? Uh, you know, whatever else you want to say about the house, okay? I'm just going to fill in some Greek here. Uh, this home is the perfect home for uh, any family with kids, dot, 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 dot. Okay, so this is where you're going to put in your property info. I'm pretty much done, right? All I need to do is click, come down here and click Submit, right? Submit, save the changes. Now, I've got a little link right here that says View This Page Online. You see this? And I can just click on it. Let's click on View This Page Online. Yeah, your neighbors at 1141 Bluer Drive just sold for $30,000 over asking price in only six days. Check out the details below, and here's the details. And then here's my lead capture. How much could your home sell for in the next 30 to 60 days? Pretty easy. Took me five minutes. I want to make this headline a little bit bigger, though. So I'm going to go back here into my back office, and I'm going to grab all this. I'm just going to highlight all this text right here. Font size. I'm going to scroll down. I'm going to say, let's go to, let's go to 36 all the way. Boom. Yeah, now I'm going to come down here and click Submit. Right. Then I can just go over here and refresh this. I'm going to right-click and just refresh it and see how it looks with a bigger headline. Looks pretty good. Your neighbor's 1141. Bluer Drive just sold for $30,000 over asking price in only six days. Check out the details below. So I just made a new squeeze page for 1141 Bluer Drive, and it took an entirety of about seven minutes. Right. didn't take very long at all. I got my photo, I got my property information, right? I went over into, in my case, PowerPoint, and I just laid out my photo with some text in it. Now, what if I want this photo to be bigger or smaller? Right? What if I want to change the size of it? I can do that. And right back here, I'm going to go back here to the back office. I've got the page already opened up. Right? I've got it already opened up. But let's say I didn't. Let's go to menu. Let's say I closed it already because I thought I was done. And then I realized, oh, I want to make that picture a little bit bigger. I could come back here and I could say, okay, well, customize website content, because that's what I want to do. I want to customize one of my websites. And I'm going to scroll all the way down to the page that I just built right here on the bottom. And I'm going to say edit. All right. And then here's my photo. I'm going to click on it and select it. All right. Let's just get this thing selected. All right. So select. Now I'm going to come up here to this picture thing again. It looks like a little picture of a tree, and I'm going to click on that. And I'm going to click on Appearance. And right here is where I can change my dimensions. Okay, this first box is for the width, and the second box is for the height. So if I want this to be a little bit wider, I can come over here and say, oh, let's make it 625. Right? And then I'm just going to say Update. Okay. Right. And then I could just click Submit to save my changes. And I just changed the size of the photo. Let's go over here as soon as it's uploaded completely and my, my changes are saved. All right, let's go over here and just refresh. All right, there you go. My photo is a little bit bigger now, okay? So there's my squeeze page. Now I've got a little gap right here. I can say, hey, I could tighten that up. I've got a bunch of white space between the text and this next headline. Let's tighten that up a little bit. Go back here and I'm gonna scroll down. Right, and then I'm going to just kind of scroll down right there and say, yeah, I got all this white space. I'm just going to put my cursor right there and just hit delete. Right, and just clean it up, backspace that a little bit, and then click submit. Okay, I think we just cleaned it up. Let's go find out. We're going to go over there, and we're going to wait for those changes to be saved. Just watching my little dial spin right here. Okay, now I'm going to refresh. All right, yeah, good. Clean that up. So here we go. We're done. We just built a squeeze page for 1141 Bluer Drive, and and the page looks great. It's all set up, all right? Now, you've got some information built into the bottom of your squeeze page because don't forget it's a template, and you've got to you've got to customize it to make it work for you. So you'll notice if you scroll down to the bottom of your squeeze pages, your name is not automatically in there. My name is, right? So you've got to click on, you know, whoops, you got to go back in your back office. That's where you would do the work. <laughs> and you got to scroll down and, and edit that text down there. 
sincerely, your name is not Chris Silveda, so go ahead and delete my signature and then put in your name, right, uh, Jan Smith. And put in the name of your brokerage, right, uh, Remax Advisors. And then put in your phone number. And it's going to be 858-442-0333. Uh, so there's your phone number. Now you've got your, my logo here still, so you've got to select that. You've got to delete it. Right. Would you like to insert? And, and in fact, let's just delete all this stuff because it doesn't belong to you. You can just say delete and, and take this video right here and delete that too. Okay. So now you got your name here, but you don't have your signature. How would you get your signature here? Well, you'd have to sign, you'd have to scan a copy of your signature. You'd have to upload it into your back office. You'd have to place it here, insert photo, and you have to place your signature right here. All right. If you want to have your Remax logo in here, you can do that too. Let's just go find a Remax logo. What I'm going to do is I'm going to come over here to Click menu, take me back to my back office, the main menu screen. And I'm going to come over here and I'm going to click on, uh, I don't know if I've got a Remax logo already, so let's go look for one. I'm going to hit control T and I'm going to open up a new screen and I'm just going to write Remax logos. All right? And I'm going to hit enter. And then I'm going to click images right here, images for Remax. And uh, look, I've got all these logo options available to me. And so I kind of like um, I kind of like this one, All right? So what I need to do now is go grab my screen capture tool again, right? I'm going to just take my green shot capture region, and I'm going to take a little photo of this photo. I'm gonna start right there, and just click and drag, All right? Click and drag, making sure I'm only getting white space. Save as Remax. Logo. I just saved that to my photos. Save. Okay, so I just went and I got a logo. Now I'm done over there. Okay, so now I'm back in my back office. Now I'm going to click Upload Images again. I'm going to upload that Remax logo because I need to convert it into a link so that I can work with it. So I'm going to say Choose File, right? Choose File, and we call it Remax logo. There it is. Select, Open, Upload. All right, there's my logo. So I'm going to right-click copy the link address, and then again, menu, customize website content, scroll down to the bottom of the page down here, past all my pages, find the page that I want to edit, 1141, I'm going to click edit, open it back up again, right? and now I'm going to scroll down to the bottom of this, down towards my signature, where I want to have my logo, bear with me here while I... Uh, move my screen around so I can see things. Okay. Oh, we didn't save our changes last time. That's why that reappeared. Right? So we remember we changed this to Jan Smith. But since I didn't submit, it didn't save those changes. So it just defaulted to what I had there. And I'm going to say Remax Advisors. We're going to do this one more time. All right. Remax Advisors. And then let's just assume that's your phone number. And then I want the logo right here underneath that. So um, I'm going to come up here. I've got the cursor in the right place, but I need to come up here and click on photo, right? And then I need to paste in that URL and click insert. And I'm going to say, okay. And now I've got this huge Remax logo. I'm going to fix that. But first, let me just delete these other things that I'm not going to need because they don't apply. And I'm going to backspace just to close up that gap. Now I'm going to click on my Remax logo because remember, I'm going to change the size of it so it's a little bit smaller. Okay, so I selected it. And now I'm going to click on this little photo icon again. And remember, I'm going to go to Appearance. And I'm going to make it a little bit smaller. I'm going to say, oh, let's go to 225. All right? Update. Okay. All right. Now, it just made that logo much smaller, didn't it? All right. So now I can come down here and click Submit and save my changes. All right. So let's go back up here. Let's click over here on this other screen. And I'm just going to refresh. And let's see what we just did soon as my little clock stops turning here. All right, reload. There we go. All right, so now I've just made a squeeze page. I got I cha All I did was change the headline. I, I uploaded a new photo. I changed the text to, you know, so that it's relative to the property above. And then I went down to the bottom, and I just changed the name from Chris to Jan Smith. And I'm just going to go ahead and... Uh, 
Oh, yeah. I'm thinking I'm in my back office. Instead, we're looking at the website. I'm going to go back over here to my edit page that I've got open already. I'm going to scroll down, and I'm going to get rid of my signature here. Let's just do this the way you could. Delete Crystal Data. And if you don't have your signature scanned, you can just type in your name here, Jan Smith, and you can play with it a little bit. Like, you could say, okay, I'm going to highlight that, and I'm going to come up here and make it uh, italicized, and I'm going to make it bigger. And right, I'm going to go to, like, oh, 18 point, and then I'm going to change the font a little bit, maybe something a little more scripty, like, uh, oh, I don't know, and Del Mono, what does that look like? Not bad, not bad. And so now I'm just going to save that change. All right, good. I mean, really, we've been, you know, we've been playing at this for maybe 10 or 15 minutes now. I'm just going to refresh this. And it says, Jan Smith, sincerely, Jan Smith, right, Remax. And here's all your, inf here's your squeeze page. All right. So it's not hard to build a squeeze page. That took no time at all. No time at all. all right. That's how you build a squeeze page from your back office. So um, just to go over this quickly, uh, one more time, I logged into my back office. Right. I clicked on Customize Website Content. I scrolled down through all my pages until I found my single property squeeze page, and I made a copy of it. And then I renamed the new copy, right? And then I went in and I clicked edit and I edited it. I inserted a new photo and I changed the headline and I saved my changes and I just created a brand new squeeze page. And this is what it looks like. Now at the moment, I've got a squeeze page, but it's not live. It's not on the internet. So what do I need to do now? What I need to do now is I need to go over to GoDaddy and buy a domain name for this new squeeze page. And I'm going to buy a .info URL because they're cheap. Number one. Number two, just so you can sort of make this distinction in your own mind, whenever you get a .com, just know that .com means commercial. Like com, think company, commercial. Think we're trying to sell you something. Like you go over to a .com website to buy something. .info is where you go to learn something. Right? .info is where you're really going to go to do some research. Right? And that's what they want to do. They want to come over here and learn about this property and research their neighborhood. So you're going to have to maybe go over to GoDaddy and you could get a URL, for instance, 1141BalurDrive.info. Right? Or 1141BalurDriveJustSold.info. Right? I'll leave that up to you, but I would incorporate the address just sold on BalurDrive.info. Right? So go get your URL. And once you've got your URL in your back office, I'm going to scroll up here and go to main menu, menu. And down here under the help center, there's a little tab right here that says domain setup instructions. And you can just click on it and it'll walk you through the process of assigning the domain name that you get to the squeeze page and making your website live, right? So it's live and up on the internet. It's real easy. Four bucks for a domain name, 15 minutes putting together your squeeze page. You got a new single property squeeze page up and it's online. All right. So that's how you build single property squeeze pages. All right. It's very simple. Okay. So go build one and when you're done, send me a link to it because I'd love to see what your page looks like. All right. But just so you know, don't be afraid to get creative with your photos. For example, Let's go back over and let's go open up uh, that PowerPoint presentation. All right, let's just close this. And let's open up this uh, 1223 Camino Del Mar different address. But let's open up this PowerPoint presentation. And I could add some more photos to this if I wanted. Right? I could say insert pictures. And let's just see what photos I have right now. Maybe I've got some property photos in here. Um, I'm going to come down here and say, okay, there's my living room and there's my kitchen. And uh, I'm going to say insert. Okay. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to shrink these down a little bit. And I'm just going to move them apart. I can separate these two from each other. Yeah. All right. So now I've got two more photos. If I want, I can play with these, right? I can put them right down here underneath. And uh, let's say if, maybe I can go find a third one. Insert pictures. So I got a living room. I got a kitchen shot. Maybe I want to get a shot of the yard or something else or a little park in the neighborhood. Right, I can come down here and I can see have I got any other good photos of that property in here. Let's just say here's a little, 
let's just say here's the backyard, right? And I'm just going to say insert that picture too, okay? And I'm going to make it small. All right, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to line these photos up so that they're all the same size and they just fit underneath this, the bigger primary image just perfectly. Like if I drag this over here, I can say, oh, that's too big. All right, that's too big. So I need some room. I'm going to shrink this one up a little bit, all right, like that. And then I'm just going to compare the sizes of, of them to each other, all right? So I'm going to make them the same size, all right? That's about the same size. And I'm going to click and drag that one right up like that. And now I'm going to take that and I'm going to shrink it down a little bit so it fits also. All right, so now what do I have? I have a primary picture of the front of the house. I got the living room, I got the kitchen, and I got the little neighborhood park. And I need to turn this into one image, all right? So again, I'm going to go to my green shot capture region and I'm going to take a picture of this big picture that I just made and turn it into one photo. Snap, save as, right, 1141 Balour 3Pix, whatever you call it, whatever you want. Save, right? And I can go upload this photo instead, right? It's not hard to do. I could say, yeah, this looks much better. Let's use that one instead. All right, let's do it. I'm going to go back into my back office. I'm going to click on Customize Website Content, right? and I'm going to go down to that page that I just built called 1141 Blue or Drive, and I'm going to click Edit. And I want to get rid of this picture because it's not the one I want anymore, right? So I'm going to uh, select it momentarily when my computer catches up to me because I'm faster than my computer today. I'm going to select this, and I'm going to delete it because I'm going to put in a new photo. And, you know, just to make it convenient for you, you don't always have to go back to your main menu and click on the upload photo link. You can just do it from this page, too. If you scroll down a little bit, you're going to see that your photo field is right here. So you can just say, add another image. Right. Add another image. I'm going to wait for this to catch up. And then I'm going to scroll down past self-header, realtor photo, broker's logo. I'm going to scroll down through those fields until I get down to the bottom. And it's going to have a new field down there for where I can upload a new image. It just says upload image, choose file. And we're going to go to 1141 Blue or Drive 3 picks. Open. Upload. Okay. Now here's my new photo. I'm going to right click, copy link address, and I'm going to come right back up here and I'm going to put my cursor right where I want that to be. And I'm going to click on this little photo. And I'm going to right click and just paste in the new URL and click insert. Okay, there's my new photo. Submit. Okay. Now let's just wait for this to catch up to us. I'm going to go over here and I'm going to refresh. Right click, reload. And look, now I got a new photo and there's got all three photos. Your neighbor's 1141 Blue or Drive just sold for $30,000 over asking price in only six days. Check out the details below. Right. Now, that's more like a headline, quite frankly, for the postcard, right? Check out the details at www.justsoldonbalueordrive.info. Right. So here's my squeeze page. Done. All I need to do is go get a domain name at GoDaddy and follow the instructions in my FAQ on how to point domain names. Now, if you don't have the time or you don't want to do that, we can do it for you. You can email your IT support. That's Dave at SimpleListingSolutions.com. And you could just send an email to Dave and say, Hey, Dave, I just bought a domain name at GoDaddy. It's www.justlistedonbalure.info. I own it. And here's my GoDaddy user uh, login and password information. Right? Will you please point the domain name for me? And Dave will say, hey, sure, I'd be happy to do that. Here's a link. Click on this link and pay $35, and I'll do it for you. Right? Or you can save yourself $35 and just do it yourself. Right? It's up to you. Uh, it's not a real challenge to do it yourself, so I would. Not, not hard to do. And again, in your FAQ instructions, we walk you right through the process. Right? So we can do it for you, or you can do it yourself. It's pretty darn simple. Um, maybe I want to move this headline right here up a little bit, this little subhead, so I don't have so much white space below the photo in that, what would I do? Well, I'm just going to go back here to the page that I'm working on, the edit field. Right, I'm going to scroll down a little bit. And again, I'm just going to put my cursor right here above the thing and hit delete and just clear that space. Yeah, see how I just moved it up. 
And I'm just going to click Submit to save those changes. And I'm going to come over here. I'm just going to reload. And I'm just going to click Refresh. Yeah, so we just moved it up a little bit. Looks a little bit cleaner now. All right. So your neighbor is 1141, just sold. The John Smith team called for more info. There's your photos. And here's your here's your lead capture, right? How much could your home sell for in the next 30 to 60 days? And here's the lead capture. Now, what I would suggest you do in the copy up here when you're putting in the descriptive property for the for the uh, property, I would also add, let's do this. I would come down here and I would add your phone number in here with a call to action, right? I'd say for more information, right? And remember, you've got to add sizzle to the steak. You can't just say, hey, do you want a steak? You've got to say, hey, would you like a super juicy, uh, you know, ribeye? It's marbleized. It just came off the grill. It's hot and it's just dripping in garlic. But, oh, wow. That's different from a steak, right? you got to put the sizzle in the steak. And you're in sales, so learning how to put some sizzle in the steak is, is key. So for more information on this property, including, you know, how many offers we received and other homes coming on the market in this neighborhood or to arrange a private tour, you know, anything you want, right, but something that's going to be kind of, oh, yeah, I want that. Then I would just put your phone number. Call, you know, uh, who would we put in there? Jan Smith. Call, you know, call Jan Smith directly at and put in your phone number. All right? Call Jan Smith directly at, let me just clean that up. And now I got my phone number in there. Submit. Okay. So let's just go back. What did we just do? We just added another call to action to the squeeze page. So I'm going to wait for this to catch up to us, and I'm going to refresh it. All right. Refresh. All right. So not only do I have a lead capture of, hey, find out how much I think I could sell your home for in the next 30 to 60 days, but also for more information on this property or whatever your call to action was, your sizzle in the steak, call Jan Smith directly at 760. So now I can get two things. Hey, I can get them to pick up their phone and call me for something else, like private tour, more information, find out what else is coming on the market in the neighborhood or what else is just recently sold. You know, I could just put that into my copy and say, call me. And then I've got my secondary lead capture, right? So I would always recommend putting your phone number with some sort of a call to action within the property description. Right? Anyway, you see how simple it is to build a squeeze page. I just walked you right through the process. It took no time at all. And, and again, the two things you're going to need are a screen capture software program like GreenShot that you can download from your back office for free. And then you're going to need a PowerPoint presentation or publisher or something like that that you can work in that you could insert photos and headlines and play with. Right. That's it. And that's how you make a page. Good luck. Like I said, when you guys make your first one, I would love to see it. If you could email me a link and said, hey, Chris, I made my first page. Check it out. When you do that, oftentimes what you'll find um, is that I may help you. I may say, hey, that's pretty good, but I got a better headline for you. Check it out. Or I may say, hey, that looks pretty good, but I, you know, I got to I clean that image up and did something else for you. You get some help. Right. Uh, but it's very easy to do. And learning how to build these squeeze pages quickly is good because that's learning how to fish. Right. These domain names only cost three dollars. You can have 30 squeeze pages in no amount of time for 30 different properties, just sold, just listed, all over the place, right, for different properties. You could easily do that. So now that we've got a squeeze page made, right, we're not done. It just means now we've got a website up, a lead capture website up on the Internet, but nobody knows about it yet. Like the people in this neighborhood, they don't know about it yet. So I still need to market to the neighborhood now with my postcards. I need to mail into the neighborhood with my handouts, stick handouts on the doors, right, or, or mail into the neighborhood. That's step two. Step one is make the site. I'm just going to say, uh, yeah, we'll save that. I'm going to close this. So step number one is, is make your page. Step number two is to make your postcard. That's really simple, too, especially once you know how to use GreenShot. <laughs> it's really simple, or PowerPoint, right? So there you go. Good luck with that.